Hey guys, Blue Parappa here, back with Dream Daddy. Last time we went on our date with Brian, there was mini golf, there were mini games, there was bragging about accomplishments we don't actually have. But today's our final episode of Dream Daddy, so I think it's time we put a bit more focus on our one true Dream Daddy, and his name is Matt Sella. Also, I'm sorry that my voice is kind of worse today, and I'm probably gonna have to stop and take pauses for breaths a lot. Um, there's a lot of smoke where I am right now because there's a bunch of forest fires and after working outside for like all summer, it's starting to get to me. And I'm sorry. But if you don't remember our second date with Matt, uh, the important bits are essentially there's an open mic night at his coffee shop and he hasn't played music in front of someone in a long time and it's implied that it's directly correlated with his wife's passing. But enough with this backwash, or <laughs> backwash, uh, but enough with this backstory. Let's commit. Wait, always carry a pocket knife, what? <laughs> Matt and, I, Matt and I have been spending a lot of time together lately. After we went record shopping to the first time, it sort of became a weekly tradition for us to scope out Vinyl Fantasy 7 for new releases. Good name. On quieter days, I'll go to the coffee spoon to just hang out with him. He's been trying to get me to branch out from my usual black coffee to try new drinks, and they're always delicious. Since I've been spending so much time with Matt, Carmen Seed and Amanda have become really close friends. Amanda's taken Carmen Seed under her wing, teaching her about photography, helping with her homework, and introducing her to music that's not just boy bands. Well, she did end up taking her to one of those screamy, cry, boy-dancing boy concerts so Matt wouldn't have to. A truly heroic move. I can tell that Carmencita really looks up to her a lot, so it's great that Amanda's trying to be a good mentor. Open mic night is tonight. Amanda and I busy ourselves getting ready. I try to pick out a nicer outfit than usual and place around the room. A bunch of really cool bands are going to be playing, and I'm excited to see them. I haven't see been to a show since the first time Matt and I hung out. It's weird. Ever since Matt played piano for me that one time, I've never been able to convince him to do it again. He's told me that he also plays guitar, drums, and even the trumpet. He still won't play any of them. For someone so passionate about music, it's strange that he doesn't want to actually play it. <sighs> Sorry. You ready to go, Pops? I hear Amanda in the hallway so as she approaches my room. Yep. Mm. Amanda pops her head in and looks me over. She pin pinches the bridge of her nose. Ugh. Dad, we talked about this. What? Mm. The sandals. They're older than I am. Vintage, some would argue. I thought you threw them out. Amanda, since when did you enroll in Fashion Police Academy? I got kicked out because I was a loose cannon who didn't play by the rules. For example, you're not allowed to mix florals, but you totally can if you have a good eye for color. You're out of your jurisdiction, rookie. Amanda guards the door until I pick out a better outfit. Stop! Those sandals are going directly into the evidence locker. What's the- it's the trash. You can pry these sandals from my cold, dead hands. I propose a compromise. Fine. Fine. We'll go middle of the road. I keep the sandals, but- and won't wear them out tonight. And then we have this exact same argument the next time I try to pull them out. Aww. I guess. Come on, Dad, we gotta go. Huh. I've never seen the coffee spoon so packed. I spot familiar faces from the pub concert, all sipping their caffeinated beverages of choice. A couple people are still setting up on stage. I don't see Matt, but I'm sure he's busy in the back. Amanda and Carmen see to find each other immediately and do their secret handshake, some complicated clapping with their hands and then a big hug. Glagio. I turn to see Hugo sitting at a table with none other, th none other than Damien. Fancy seeing you two here. Ah. I am, as you know, a dedicated patron of the arts. Oh. It's a bit of a tradition between Damien and I now. Matt's open mic necks have always seemed to bring out the best talent in town. Oh. Sometimes. Sometimes it gets a bit odd, even for my admittedly eclectic tastes. You guys see Matt around? Hmm. Yes, he was just helping out that Pablo gets equipment out of his van. Hmm. Whoa, Bacon Vale is actually playing a set? Hmm. What? It's a... Uh, witch house. Hmm. Damien's ears perk. What is that? I... don't know. <laughs> well, it sounds delightful. Amanda says it isn't. Hmm. Shame. Alright, I'm gonna go find Matt and see if he needs any help. I head to the back room of the coffee spoon where I find Matt going over some last-minute show details with Pablo. My dude! Pablo and I share a full-on, sincere bro hug. Oh. Glad you could make it, Glagio. Wouldn't miss it for the world, man. You guys need any help? Hey. Uh, I think we're all set, actually. Pablo, can you remind me what order the people are going in? Well, you got the handsome and unforgettable Vake and Vale open up a set with selections from his new album. 
which diaries. And then the third waves, who are all extremely attractive and could beat me up and I'd still be into it, applying a three-person acoustic set. We got a little bit of spoken word in there, a magic act, and it looks like we're closing with... Jonathan Jones and the Speakeasy Choir. What? No, absolutely not. I remember the ridiculous set that this band put on when they opened for Pup. Sometimes when it's quiet, I can still hear the sound of an accordion being violently thrown against the wall over and over. They weren't... that bad. No, you don't understand. The last time they played open mic night, they lit their bases on fire and set the fire marshal. Had to shut us down. They also refused to pay for their drinks. Yikes. They are not playing tonight. Well, they're outside, all 17 of them. Oh. Tell them we're full. Then who's filling their spots? Hmm. Uh, I'll do it. Matt, you should play. Well, Matt's not over his thing. And romance dictates that I have to take the bullet, so... We gotta do it. I'll play. What are you doing? Hey. What? What would you even do? Stop talking. Close your mouth. The Scamunist Manifesto is making a comeback solo show. Hmm. I thought you didn't know how to play anymore. You don't know how to play anything anymore. Ska comes to you in the hour when you need it most, without fail. Stop being so desperate to please your hot friend, Glagio. Hey. Is there a keyboard around? Your unending thirst will be your ultimate downfall. Yeah, I have one right here. Then it's settled. Hmm. Dude, uh, are you sure? No, I'm not. As sure as Ska's generally played with staca staccato notes on the upbeat. Well, as long as nothing gets set on fire, it can't possibly be worse than Jonathan Jones with and the Speakeasy Choir. Matt grabs me by the shoulders and stares me into the eyes. Hey. Thank you, Glagio. Oh, you big time. I settle back into my seat with a man and watch th the show start. The house is packed now, with a few people even standing outside to watch. What have I gotten myself into? Amanda, I may have made a mistake. <laughs> Dad, if you brought a ba brand new pair of those sandals in hopes that I would be okay with you wearing them, I swear to- I agreed to pull out my ska. What? No. Whoa. Absolutely not. I had to, to help Matt. Mm. Dad, I love you and I support you, but we left ska behind for a reason. Look, it's either this or we're in the splash zone for a group of 20 musicians all crying at the same time for the sake of art. Mm. And I'm not being hyperbolic about the splash zone thing. They literally hand out ponchos. Somehow this is the preferable option. Mm. I just have to- Play the thing. Play what thing? You don't know how to play any instruments. Just promise me you'll still love me after this. Hmm. I promise. Hmm. But I may have to change my last name, and I hope you'll understand. Of course. Hmm. My new last name is gonna be Fire Blast. Amanda. Hmm. Or maybe Cold Steel. Oh, Matt takes the stage to a roar of applause from the crowd. He grabs the mic and addresses us all. Uh, hey. uh thank you everyone for coming out tonight. Matt's so nervous. And I'm so nervous. I can't stop staring at his mouth and that makes me even more nervous. Hey, uh, we have a jam-packed roster full of a lo amazing local talent you might already know or maybe have seen before but would like to see again and I'm rambling now, I'm sorry. Aw, oh, Matt. Hey. So, um, let me just bring out a dear friend of mine who's making his live show debut. Please welcome to the stage, uh -huh. Vacant Vale. The crowd cheers again and Pablo bounds up to the stage, beaming. He sets up his two laptops and keyboards and launches into his set. Thank you, everyone. This one is called Witch House Never Dies and You're Next. Pa Pablo hits the crowd with heavy, inaccessible synth bass layered under drum samples and clips from science fiction shows played in reverse. It it's maybe not the right show for this, but everyone seems to be enjoying whatever this is. At the end of the song, Pablo jumps on the mic. Thank you to all the veil wares who came out tonight. A portion of the crowd cheers. He has a fan base already? He has a name for the fan base? This is his first live show. You can buy t-shirts out of the trunk of my car after the show. Also, I'd like to thank my mom for coming out to watch me play You're My Rock Ma. I love you, honey. Pablo plays a few more songs that are actually super fun to listen to. Wow, definitely did not see that coming, especially after Amanda's strongly worded thoughts about the genre. Hey. Once he's gone, he vacates the stage and Matt jumps back up again. Hey. Big round of applause for our very own Pablo, who coincidentally works here. Yay, Pablo. Hmm. And hey, uh, next up are a group of young ladies who have been tearing up the East Coast with rock riot punk for three tiers now. Oh, years. I, I meant years. Three years. Sorry, the writing on my hand smudged because I'm sweating. Uh, I shouldn't hey. have told you all that I'm sweating. I'm sorry, uh... Wow, he seems just as visibly nervous as I feel right now. Hey. Uh, put your hands together for the third waves. <laughs> Buzzcut Molly from Vinyl Fantasy VII takes the stage, followed by two girls with colorful hair and fishnet stockings. All of them are wearing combat boots, and all of them look mad about something. Hey. Their set is so energetic that it almost 
Seems like a pit is gonna be open up in the coffee shop. I look over to Amanda, who's clearly enjoying the hell out of the anarchic female fronted punk rock. Aww. Dad, can I get a lip ring? Sure, if you pay for it yourself. Dad. Come on, it's no fun if it's not an act of youthful rebellion. <laughs> After the third wave closes their own set. A variety of acts played to the delight and sometimes horror of the crowd. The magician tries to turn a cup of coffee into a cup of coins, but ends up just spilling hot coffee all over himself and dropping the coins. As each act leaves the stage, I get more and more nervous. There are so many people here. I don't know anything about how to play the piano other than it has keys and you have to touch the keys to make sounds. Also, I almost sp spilled the flat wipe stripes in my hands because it's trembling so much. Huh? No joke, Dad. I'm rooting for you. You're gonna knock him dead. Thanks, Manda Panda. An improv comedy group takes the stage. They take suggestions for the crowd and end up doing a scene that was supposed to be about coffee but instead turns into a five minute of sub dick jokes. Classic. I have heard- I have a hard time laughing. My stomach's just trying to not- tying itself into knots. Not just regular knots either, like the kind of knots that you get when you throw your phone into charger, headphones, and laptop charger into the same bag. Out of nowhere, Matt sits down next to me. Hey, are you doing okay? I'm totally fine. Everything is great. Nothing is wrong. I feel like this is one of those things where we're gonna get the same reaction no matter what we choose, so... This one. I want to reassure him that I'm okay, but I just can't get the words out. I'm here. Oh. All right, just making sure. I know you're gonna do great. Matt squeezes my shoulder and jogs back up to the stage. Oh, Everybody, we're down to the last act of the night. Hey, yeah. Now this person who is my friend is making their return to a state to the stage after a long hiatus. Please welcome, formerly of the Scamunist Manifesto, Glagio Ichigo. Everyone cheers as I take the stage. Damien Hu and Hugo are staring at me in shock. Uh, hey everybody, good to be here. Thanks for having me on. Great crowd, um, my name is Glagio, but you can call me by my stage name. Frankie Two Tones, Five Iron Freddy, Thomas Kalnaki. Or Thomas Kalnaki. Uh, I like the sound of this one. Matt liked it. The crowd claps politely. I sit down at the piano. That's a lot of keys. That's so many keys. Do pianos usually have this many keys? Wait, this is a keyboard, so if it has, like, as many keys as a piano, that's a really good quality keyboard. Good job, Pablo. God, these lights are really bright. Someone coughs. I guess, uh, I guess that's some good stage banter. And now I have to play a song. This song is called Beam Me Up, Scatty. Deep breath. How hard can it be? No matter how disastrous this is, I just have to make it through this whole song and I'll have to save the day. Here goes nothing. Tickle that ivory! Please sing along. Pick it, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Oh, oh. Singing that easy scat tune. Unity, unity, watch us fill up the room. Rude boys coming for you. Take warning. If you don't skank tonight, it'll be alarming. I... Everybody ska. Be me up, Scotty. Damn. Be me up to the Ska Trek Enterprise. I don't know, I was trying to play it, like, fine to the four chords of Pops, but I think it'll always just force you to play, like, the two notes directly next to each other, so it always sounds bad. <laughs> Dang it. I look up at the crowd. I see a bunch of people shifting in their seats. Oh no, I'm losing them. Ska really is dead, and I killed it. Everybody Ska? Everybody Ska! Hey. Like a checkerboard tie-wearing angel descending from two-tone heaven, Matt walks on stage, playing the guitar. We lock eyes and he gives me a reassuring smile as he effortlessly plays the chords to the song. I look out and see the crowd go wild to Matt's appearance on stage. Everyone's bouncing around now. It fills me with renewed energy as I, we, jump into the chorus. Hey. Be me up, Scotty. Be me up, Scotty. Hey. Be me up, Scotty, to the Star Ska Trek Enterprise. Oh. Matt jumps into an improvised solo that was way better than the one Darren Springsteen wrote in high school. Hey. 
We make it to the end of the song in one piece and the crowd goes wild. I'm moist with sweat, head to toe. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Sella. The crowd practically screams. They all start ch chanting Matt's name. Hey. They want to hear you play, man. Oh. Matt smiles. Hey. I, I think I'm ready. I excuse myself from the stage and take my seat next to Amanda as Matt cozies up to the microphone. Hey. I take back what I said about Ska. That was pretty cool. I high-five Amanda and we look towards the stage. Uh -huh. Hey, everybody. More cheers. I, I haven't played in front of people in a long time. But it's cool to be back. Hey. This one goes out to a good friend. Matt locks eyes with me. We both smile. Hey. Who helped me be able to do this again. Hey, Thank yeah. you. Hey. This is an old one from Stillness the Dancing. The entire crowd excitedly jumps to their feet. Matt closes his eyes and starts playing an upbeat, in intricate melody. The crowd sways to the music. Matt looks entirely at peace with a small smile on his face as he sings. After he finishes the song... The crowd insists on an encore. He ends up playing a few more tunes to an adoring audience before thanking everyone for coming out. The moment he steps off stage, he gets mobbed by people. Everyone seems to be amazed that he's playing again. Hey. Damien and Hugo thread their way through the crowd to talk to me. Hey. That was amazing. Mm. It was certainly a sight. Do they make industrial dark wave ska? <laughs> I'm not sure, too sure if that genre exists, but it's never too late to start a band, apparently. I glance back over to Matt, who's hugging a bunch of people. They really seem excited to see him play. Oh. Well, yeah, he hasn't played since he lost Rosa. What? Hey. I didn't realize. It suddenly all makes sense why Matt was so reluctant to play. It must have been take taken so much for him to jump on stage with me just now. The crowd slowly filters into the street streets as the show ends. I decide to stick around a little longer to see if I can talk to Matt. Huh? Hey, I'm taking Carmen Cita to get ice cream. Is it okay if she sleeps over? We're gonna start paint our nails and start a punk band. Yeah, you go have fun. Please, just please don't wake up the neighbors with any biting truths about government or whatever. Don't worry, we'll wake them up figuratively instead. Amanda and Carmen Cita bump fists and head out. I spot Mash Matt finishing up conversations with a couple stragglers on their way out of the coffee shop. Hey, Matt. Hey. Hey, dude. Need any help closing up? Hey. hey. I'd love that. Matt and I stack up the chairs and sweep the floors in silence. We carry the stage equipment back to Matt's van where we see Pablo selling merch to a crowd of people out of his trunk. Shirts of the finest quality every step of production from thread to stitch overseen by yours truly graphic designs fit for a king. That kid's gonna go far. Hey. We head back to the coffee spoon and Matt puts the finishing touches on closing. When we're all done, Matt and I lean up against the counter. Thanks for saving me from myself up there. Hmm. All in... All in all, it ended up being pretty cute. Huh? Plus, you protected us from Jonathan Jones and the Speakeasy Choir. Someone told me they tried to do a st street performance down the road, and they all got arrested for trying to form a human pyramid in traffic. Did it feel good to be on stage again? Hey, uh, oh. Yeah, it, it really did. I, um, I had heard you stop playing after your wife died. I didn't realize it had been that long. Uh, -huh. uh yeah. Uh -huh. Matt looks like he wants to say something, but is having a hard time getting it out. Uh -huh. He takes a deep breath. I'm not really a people person, um, obviously. Crowds make me nervous as all hell, which is, uh, not exactly the best for performing live music. But, but when, I, when I was with Rosa, she lit up the room. I, I could follow her lead. After she passed, I, I was lost. Even touching it could not hurt too much. I tried playing for people over and over, but the music would never come out, so I just gave up. I guess what I'm trying to say is, life wasn't this scary when I had someone in my corner, someone I felt safe with. I, um, hadn't felt like that for a long time. Hmm. Until tonight. What changed? Hey. You. Blood rushes to my face, as it should. Hey. When I saw you looking so scared on stage, you reminded me of myself, and I don't want anyone else to have to feel that bad. Uh -oh. But when I got up there and started playing for the first time in forever, I felt comfortable. I was having fun. I had spent all this time being so afraid of performing that I forgot how much I loved it. Hey. Your strength gave me strength. Whenever you were trying, whether you were trying to or not, you got me out of my comfort zone, so thank you. Oh. Thank you for helping me realize I can do this. I'm glad I could help. You coming on stage, I didn't think you would stick your neck out for me like that, especially considering all of this. That really means a lot to me. Uh -huh. Well, you mean a lot to me. Matt and I lock eyes. He leans in and kisses me quick and soft and pulls away and covers his mouth. What? Oh god, I'm sorry, I... I, uh, sorry, I can't believe I just did that. Neither can I, but... Uh -huh. I'm glad you did. Our lips touch again. I brush his hair out of the way and rest my hand on the small of his back. Matt pulls me closer. Everything about him is sweet and soft. His lips taste like vanilla. He smells like coffee cake. 
I can feel him smile through the kiss, which makes me smile. He laughs into my mouth and I can't help but laugh too, our teeth knocking against each other. Ow. The moment I open my eyes, we, I realize we're still leaning against the espresso machine. Maybe the coffee shop isn't the right place for this. Maybe you're right. Let's go back to my place. Yay! Our angry about weather score is super down. You know what? I'm down for an encore. Awesome. Okay. Mandals. Oh dear. Phew, I think I have everything finally set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think I I think that's her car in the driveway. Okay, gotta hack natural. Be cool, Glagio. Be cool. Amanda walks through the door with a suspicious look on her face. Hey dad. Off to a good start. Mm. Something fishy? Rats. What? No. You asked too many questions. Sorry, sweetie. It's the feds. I uh I had a crab cake sandwich for lunch. That's probably it. You're allergic to shellfish. Oh. Oh no. I forgot. Again. Dad. Oh gosh, I'm gonna be sick. What have I done? I'm kidding. You're right. I have a little surprise for Ugh. you. Yeah, I can tell. You're very bad at lying. Amanda, my dear, would you care to join me in the kitchen? Father, it would fill my heart with glee. I lead Amanda over to the kitchen table where the present lies covered under a tablecloth. It's nothing special, but I wanted to get you a little something. You graduated high school last week, and I know you told me not to make a big deal out of it, but... Ah, uh, Dad, you... I dramatically whip out... Whip the cloth off the table. Amanda's jaw drops. Yes. No way. I figured you probably won't be able to get cable in the dorm, so I thought it might be nice to take a piece of home with you. A DVD box set of long-haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers? This is all 19 seasons. And bonus material, including commentary with actual ghosts featured on the show. Huh. Dad, I love this. Thank you. She gives me a big hug. I'm glad you like it. Hey, you want to hang out with me in the backyard for a bit? Toss the old pigskin or something? Totally. I follow Amanda to the back door. Oh. And they're all here. What? You told me not to make a big deal, but you seem to have forgotten that my entire mission in life is to make a big deal out of your accomplishments. So consider this your graduation party. Surprise! Dad, everyone's here! Well, yeah, everyone wanted to come and support you. Is that... a mac and cheese... bar? Sure is. Fully customizable, down to the type of mac. And there's ice cream cake, the good kind with the crunchies in the middle. Yeah! I... I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just go have fun with your pals. I'm so proud of you, Amanda. Amanda smiles and runs to her friends. I should make the rounds and make sure everyone's having a good time. But first, mac and cheese. Watch this be the exact same as the ending I was trying to avoid. Glagio, my dude. Pablo, how's the shirt business going? My bud, I got men's shirts, I got women's shirts, I got tank tops in a variety of sizes, shapes, and colors. Each one of them in a fine quality, screen printed with the logo and visage of world-renowned witch house outfit Vacant Veil. Vale. Purchasable at the most respectable retailers, but more specifically, out of the trunk of my car. I'm also selling my mom's world-famous homemade apple butter. Never stop hustling, Pablo. Baby, you got it. Glagio! Brian, you made it. <laughs> ha, I don't pass up on good Mac. What do you think of the party? Oh. It's not bad. Just not bad? Ah. Yeah, not bad. Don't let him bait you. Don't let him bait you. Thank you for the lovely compliment. Daisy trots up. Hi. Amanda's dad? Hey, Brian's daughter. See? See how that feels? This is a really great party. Thank you so much for inviting us. You're very welcome, tiny child who knows how to pay a compliment. Brian and I lock eyes. This isn't over. Hey, bro. Bro. Oh. This is a real, real ragger, taking our older age into consideration. I'm trying to be in bed at the reasonable hour tonight. Don't let me get too wild. Dude. Don't worry, dude. I'll keep an eye on your fruit punch intake. You know, I'm really glad we're bros again. Let's hit the gym sometime soon, huh? Sure thing, dude. Bri Briar and Hazel peek out behind Craig. Hey, little ones. Hello. Hiya. Thank you for all the ice cream cake. Mm. Wait. Wait, girls, how much of that did you eat? Briar ate four pieces. Ask any witness. No, I didn't. Hazel ate four pieces and wants to pin it on me because we look alike. I have your face. Nobody will ever believe you. Oh, boy. I'll let you guys figure this out. River's just like, yeah, my siblings are fighting and every and my dad is, like, upset with them. I'm still the favorite. Good seeing you, Craig. Let's hang out soon, yeah? Hey. Totally. Tell Amanda congrats for us. 
Looks like you settled into this neighborhood quite nicely. Yep, couldn't ask for a better cul-de-sac. Oh. Well, I'm glad. Hopefully we'll see you at more church events. We got a big schedule planned out for the rest of the year. Sure thing, Joseph. And maybe you aren't doing anything later. We could hang out sometime. Sure, Joseph. That'd be great. Well, see you later. Hugo comes up to me with a plate of mac and cheese. Hey. The perfect cheddar to mash ratio. Beautiful work, Blagio. Thanks, Hugo. You know, I'm really pleased to see Amanda going to our dream school. I'm glad she turned it around for finals. Me too. That scholarship money will really help. Amanda walks by and pretends not to see Hugo. Amanda, come say hi to your old teacher. Oh. Hey! Congratulations on graduating. I know you're going to do great things at art school. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Amanda starts to back away. Wait, I just realized that you're not my teacher anymore, so I don't have to be afraid of talking to you. You no longer hold power over me. Oh. You're right. Go forth, adult. I can no longer give you detention. Yeah, I'm gonna go break anything I want, there's nothing you can do about it. Are you still mad about that time I gave you detention for breaking my globe? Nope. Oh. And I'll have you know that it, that globe didn't even fit through the basketball hoop in the first place, so she fit into she'll fit into college just fine. Hey, hey. <laughs> Dang it! This is the exact same ending I got and like, got the first time I beat Matt's third date and went on all the first dates with the dead to avoid. Ripped. Yeah, I was ripped off. Robert gestures vaguely to the snack table. Uh, Good stuff. Yep. Huh. See you later. <laughs> what a splendid garden party. My deepest thanks for extending an invitation to my son and I. This icebox cake is divine. Yeah, thanks, dude. Good cake. I stare at Lucian. He knows, I know. But I am a man of my word. The story of his oregano betrayal will go unsung. Thanks for coming by. I spot Amanda and Carmencita in a corner of the party. I wonder what they're up to. As I walk up, I can tell that they're already deep in conversation. Yeah. Listen, it's like prison rules. First day of high school, you gotta establish yourself at the top of the pecking order. Really? Ah. No, just find a group of people that you like and then hang out with them. Be yourself. Don't worry about being cool. You'll find friends. Mm -hmm. And try not to kiss anyone who also has braces. <sighs> yeah, you get stuck, kiddo. Hey, guys. Hey, Amanda's dad. Come and see this here is getting ready for high school. Got any advice? When you join band, pick the easiest instrument to carry. I'm still wa walking a little sideways for my sousaphone days. Mm. Flute it is. Ah. All right, I'll leave you guys to it. Carmen Sita and me and Amanda st still on for dinner and your pops tomorrow? Yep, we're already planning a carrot cake for you guys. I better keep making rounds. I leave the two ke to keep conspiring. conspiring. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat on our back porch step. The sun is setting and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. Killer party pops. What can I say? I was inspired. So, I, uh, I also have something for you. <laughs> for me? Why? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but... Growing up wasn't easy, but it could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. Dad, you've been there for me this through everything. There's, There's been times in my life where you were my only friend. I was really scared of going to college and being so far away from you, but I realized that everything you've done for me has been to prepare me for this. And I'm ready. I wouldn't be who I am today without you. Don't cry, don't cry. I swear to go God, Glaggy, if you cry again. You're the best dad. I love you. And I'm crying. Anyway, that was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. <laughs> Present time. Amanda hands me a tiny wrapped package. I tear the wrapping off to find a framed picture of me and Amanda. It's us. Hmm? Kinda shocking all of our photo albums are just pictures of me, huh? I figured we need at least one together before I leave. Amanda, thank you. Watching you grow up has been the happiest experience of my life. You're such a talented and intelligent young woman and I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. Knock him dead, kid. <laughs> Always do. Ah. Amanda and I share a hug. This is the only- this is only the beginning, Pops. Plenty more memories for us down the road. Memories to make and stuff to break, right? Aww. Oh, I'm gonna break so much stuff. Intentionally and unintentionally, you're probably gonna have to pay for most of it. It would be my honor. Look, if I told- this is an emotional scene, but honestly, if I told my dad that, he would just be like, <laughs> No, you're paying for that yourself, kid. <laughs> Looks like someone's been waiting to talk to you. I glance over to the back of the yard where Matt is sitting on a bench between our beneath our cherry blossom tree. Of course. He smiles at me. <laughs> I'll leave you to it. Me and the Emmas are going to go get ice cream. Wait. Love you. Love you, Pops. Wait, her and the Emmas? I thought I thought the Emmas were bitch were both bitches and like left you. 
I'm so confused. Amanda runs off to join her friends. And the cherry blossoms are falling. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll just go with it. I take a seat next to Matt and the last guests make their way out of the party. Hey. Seems like Amanda really enjoyed this. Thanks for putting together such a nice surprise. Carmen Cita's middle school graduation is coming up in a year or two. I'm sure for the right fee I could put something together. <laughs> Only if I get to DJ. Matt looks down at his hands. It, it seems like he does that wh whenever he's trying to figure out the right words to say. Oh. Hey. I just wanted to say that. Uh. Ah gosh, this is gonna come out dumb no matter how I say it, so here it goes. Uh -huh. I haven't felt this happy in a long time. Whoa. Uh. You... You brought out the best in me and it wasn't just because of the ska. Although that was really cute. Hey. Every moment that we've gotten to spend together since we met has been an adventure and I just hope that we get to keep doing that. We make a pretty good team, you know? I mean, I'll let you handle the music playing. And the music singing. And actually pretty much everything related to music. But I can organize a party pretty well. I am also good at kissing, so that's a big plus. Yeah, sounds great. That's true. You are very nice to kiss. I slide my arm around Matt and run fingers through his hair, giving him a small kiss on the cheek. He giggles. Hey. See? That was a good one. And hey, I've actually been working on some new stuff. It feels really good to be riding again. Oh man, Matt, that's amazing. I'd love to listen to it sometime. If, I mean, if you were comfortable sharing it with me. Maybe I could show you some new tunes I'm working on in the studio later. You know, I'm gonna insist that we add a horn section. Matt rests his head on my shoulders and sighs happily. You know what? I'd actually like that. <laughs> we get these tender scenes and then the last dad tip we get is trust no one. But anyway... That was Dream Daddy. Oh hey, Aaron Hansen actually produced this and everything. Neat. Yeah, so that was our last episode. It kinda sucks that... Um... Instead of, like, getting a slightly less awkward ending with everyone after going on the first date, we just got the same ending. But, I mean, we'll deal with it, I guess. And by we, I mean me. But yeah. I had, a I had a lot of fun with this. Uh, it's... Like, one of those dating sims where it has, like, a stupid... Or, like, a kind of silly premise. But... Like, it goes about it very sincerely, which was always nice, which is always nice. But yeah. So, like I said, we're gonna end it here, and... So, if you guys have any games you want me to play, just, like, recommend that in the comments. And... I'll see you guys next time. Here is a necessary picture of Nat sh Matt shirtless. Good.